First, the massive hot blob was moving towards the east coast, but then another earthquake struck right in the same location. An earthquake has been reported in New Jersey, just miles away from New York City. So now we got to look into the deeper aspect of what's going on with this heat blob. And basically, this is connected to magma. And if you look on live science, there was a model about these two continent sized hot blobs that were in Africa underneath and then in the Pacific. And what do these things cause in the long term? Well, when you look deeper into it, they could potentially cause eruptions based on Discover Magazine. Live, is not live science says the same exact thing. So what we're going to do here is we also seen a shift in uh, magma with Yellowstone that connects with the hot blobs. And there is also at nature.com, geofluid mapping reveals the connection between magma fluids and earthquakes. So wherever this magma shifts, we start to have earthquakes occur as well. You can see from this study, all of the red is magma ascent. And you can see all the green is where earthquakes occur. And this was done over studies in Pacific, also in multiple locations. So this is why we must keep an eye on this. And I'm going to give you the subsurface stressed zones, wherever you're on the West Coast, on the East Coast. I'm going to give you all of the information. So you're going to want to stick around to hear all of this. First, though, we had a 2.7 hit right next to Ramapo Fault. And remember, Ramapo Fault is not even the only thing there. We are just now finding out that there was another fault that they found out was there. Uh, and look at it right here on screen. This was right here. The Colombian geologist, Dr. Falare Kalawali, the data produced by the quake could be invaluable, he said. He and his colleagues published this data, a report identifying the new fault in Hunterdon County. And look, never before they discovered it. This is new in New Jersey. Using machine learning and a network of seismometers installed after the last spring's magnitude 4.8, they connected more than 1,000 tiny aftershocks to pinpoint the new fault's location. So this is going to tell them in the future about a lot of different things coming. So this is something we have to continue to watch, a new fault that is in that area. And he's basically saying that the faults are producing these earthquakes and they got some of the oldest faults in the East Coast. Now, going back to that hot blob that was coming all across all the way into New York, researchers uh, in Rutgers was already saying that a massive uh, warm rock was rising beneath in New England. And this came from New England all the way to New York. Over time, we showed you Earth scope and the central Appalachian anomaly and then the northern Appalachian anomaly. So where these things lead to, we can connect a lot of earthquakes and shifts, sub uh, surface stress. I got all the information though for you with the subsurface stress coming up here in just a second. So subscribe for all the new details. But first, let's get into Yellowstone. They told us a little bit earlier on, but we missed this. A lot of us missed it that the we now know where the magma is shifting in Yellowstone and it's shifting northeast. So what I did for everybody here is I, I made a model based off of USGS data so that you can see where this shift is going. And if you look on screen here, this is the official National Park Service map. And if you look at this, this is where the new projected northeast magma shift risk zone is. And if you're in this risk zone, look on screen here, we're going to tell you uh, you got MT right here, Montana, North Dakota. We got Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, because the caldera now is shifting magma northeast. And this is going to be something that, I mean, I feel a lot of people didn't even understand or pay attention to. Let's read a little bit of this right here. A new topograph study from Scientist University of Texas used earthquake waves that plashed through the Earth's outer core to improve resolution of seismic velocity within deep earth. They found evidence for a plume of 350 kilometers diameter extending from one core to the mantle boundary and a Yellowstone source of heat. And if you look on here, you can see some of that. These are the, some of the studies that went back even further here. And you can see the mantle plume all the way beneath Yellowstone. Now, 
this northeast way is going stretches all the way into Canada as well. What they did, though, they went out there and they used these vibrator machines. I know most of y'all are going to be like, uh, what are you saying? Yeah, they actually vibrate the earth and they cause their own mini earthquakes. But when they're doing that, they have this seismic detector uh, of visibrosis. How you say rig at the work in Yellowstone National Park, avoid disturbing park visitors. And what they do is they propagate artificial seismic waves through the ground at nighttime. And then they'll be at the Yellowstone Park getting that data so they can understand. OK, uh, so now we can see a little bit under there. And I know a lot of y'all say, oh, well, is that safe there? Uh, from what they say, uh, accordingly, it is. But let's see what you say in the comment section here. Now, moving into it, there is stress zones and where the magma blob is going. Let's read a little bit more about the magma blob from live scientists for people. Blobs are hot regions at the bottom of the Earth mantle, about 2,000 kilometers to 3,000 kilometers depth, which might be composed of different material compared with surrounding mantle rock. Scientists have long known about these two hot regions under Pacific Ocean and Africa. And now we're talking about in New York, where these blobs basically have possibly existed. They're sands for hundreds and millions of years, but they're starting to shift and move around. And you can see right here. Uh, where the blob is and then the plume tail and the plume head and it comes all the way up to the gigantic volcano uh, and that's when it erupts but there's no sign accordingly right now for eruptions now check this out so if the the data shows us from usgs models and everything else that subsurface stress can happen from this heat because the heat and the rock and the mantle and everything together so that's why you need to read this right here we got this from GFZDE, update for world map, map of tectonic stress. So subscribe right now. We're going to be giving all these regional location information for you that a lot of people probably ain't paying attention to. Now, you need to look at this really closely here. The colors indicate three classic stress re uh, regimes. And it goes into red indicates normal faulting stress. So you can see where red is. You can see along the uh, west coast, we got some of that. Uh, along the Latin America area, but let's go a little bit deeper here. Green are strike slip stress. And you can see green is along the east coast of the United States. And again, with the blue, then we got thrust faulting stress. And you're like, what is that? What is that? Uh, so I'm going to show you this on screen right here. You got a normal fault, which you can see how it's sliding away you got the reverse fault and then you got the strike slip which is going straight and then the other side going the other way and a lot of these plate detachments as well we we matched up a map of the plate detachment so if you're on the east coast yes you do have a lot of those areas that doesn't have normal stress and you, you say well what is causing that there's a researcher coming out in queensland a mining data informed better understanding of underground stress He's coming out and saying that a lot of the stuff that's happening, he says, earthquakes don't always come from nature. Sometimes we cause them, Dr. Rahabi says. So a, a lot of the areas where it's not normal stress faulting, they're gathering data right now. Dr. Rahabi said the mining data, which was analyzed remotely, would lead to pinpointing vulnerable areas that could potentially trigger earthquakes. We're going to grab this man's data as soon as he comes out with it. And make sure we relate that straight to you right away. Because again, when we looked at some of these regions, a lot of people wasn't paying attention to it. And again, I'm going to show you some more stuff that people wasn't uh, really paying attention to. And again, this is where Yellowstone is at right here. And since we know the magma has shifted northeast, it's not the same how we thought it was going to be. You can also see the plate motion here. This is USGS data. So this is giving us insight on the regions that's not just being struck as people look at the earthquake and say, oh, well, that was just a 2.7. Yeah, with heat and uh, magma moving with blobs of plume and everything else moving underneath the surface. So it's, it's really important that we look at this at a more detailed scenario here. Because I just did the one video, massive next. Watch next, massive hot blob moving beneath east coast. So that was really important there 
And again, we're going to have that more information coming out on that. And we got some people here in the comments who've been telling us a lot of situations going on in their area. So if you've seen anything in your localized area that you feel is out of normal, you can definitely give it to us. It's Jackson2447 at gmail.com. And we dropped in the chat the last video I did because that hugely links in. Now, let's not leave yet because now that we know that this connects to earthquakes, this specific zone we're going to look at right here, let's look a little bit deeper because the epicenter now of New York where the magma is flowing and all the other regions, this is being pushed up and it's sliding through and moving. And some people say, oh, well, this happened for so long. Yes, it has. And now we're moving into a level of the shift where we need to watch where this magma goes. And the problem with this magma is, is they don't give us live model updates. So we can't get live models weekly. They'll, they'll tell you like, well, we'll we, over two years, it took them two years actually to go out. Like after maybe it was like 2020 or some 2023, they gave us a model a couple of years after that. So these are, these things are not commonly updated, which I think should be a huge thing that would be a you know big part of public safety. What do you think? So this is going to be something that over the weeks and months and course of time, we're going to definitely have an evolving plan to be looking at and strategize on. So I want you right now, though, if you just tuned in, to definitely subscribe, hit us with a like because we're doing the work for the people. And if you look in the live chat, watch the next video. That was the first video to this that broke, which New York Post actually took my title and then used it. And I post the video way before they even put that article out. So I want to thank you all for your support. Get that information before it all breaks and everybody else don't know what's going on. And on the left hand side, you'll see the video that I put out the other day.